so we will be waiting for some participants. Okay. Um, uh, hello, everyone. Welcome back to our seven cross border connectivity event. This week, we have invited a guest speaker from Ecuador. His name is Jorgito. You can call him Jorge, and and he, he will today tonight he will talk about the topic Black Lives Matter and activism during an epidemic. So if you have any questions about his topic or his country, please feel free to ask anything. And any questions or any suggestions and views are welcome for, uh, with the event. So I just would like to uh, give the floor to our guest speakers. As long as you know, I can't wait to hear from you, from the guest speaker too. I think you, the participants will also can't wait to hear from you too. So yeah, how do you, so you can start now. Okay, hello everybody. I'm very glad to be here joining you. Um, first of all, I would like to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Jorge, um, as uh, Imer said, I'm, I come from Ecuador. I'm a sociology student. Uh, I haven't graduated yet, but uh, hello. Thank you, Adi. <laughs> Uh, but I'm uh, already very involved in the stuff I find interesting about the world. Um, so yeah, for this topic, uh, at the beginning I was thinking about talking about something else, but all this uh, thing around George Floyd happened, and for me it's very interesting to touch a topic that is so relevant. Um, hello, A. -A. Um, so yeah, um, one of the important things I would like to mention about, about the stuff I'm about to, to say, about to speak, is that uh, uh, I try not to have a very, um, a very, how can I say, mainstream opinion on this kind of topics. So I will, I divided this, uh, I divided this speech or whatever like this kind of uh, webinar in two sections the first section is very related to facts I will try to be as uh, factual as possible and objective as possible with the stuff that is happening right now especially because it's a very controversial topic uh, and the second section it's gonna be more about debating about the stuff that is happening around which for me will be very gratifying if you participate, if you like uh, ask me questions or more than ask me questions, question like literally like go against some of the stuff I will say. So yeah, uh, for me it will be interesting to hear your opinions more than mine because I know my opinion. <laughs> so yeah, I will start first. Um, that will be like the introduction. Um, there is uh, three points that we will at, uh, we will treat we will uh, talk about today. Um, the first one is what is activism to understand uh, what's the meaning or what's the purpose of the existence of activism and activists. Uh, the third one is uh, black uh, Black Life Matters. Uh, what's the history of this movement and what what are the objectives that they're trying to achieve. Uh, sorry, a little bit further. And the, fourth, uh, the third point will be about protests during the COVID-19 period, like where we're living right now, what, what does it mean to have a protest during this moment? Um, I think the context of these protests are very important. Uh, many people are actually against them because of the COVID-19 situation, but not specifically because of what's the objective of these protests, but more because of the context around it. So I think it's a very important uh, topic to address. What does it mean to have a protest during this period of time? Uh, and af uh, at any time, if you want to interrupt me to say something, please feel very welcome to do it. Just stop me, say like, hello, Jorge, I want to say something, and please talk, interact with me. I think that will be the best uh, for all of us. Um, I will start sharing my screen. Oh, I think, uh, Iman, you have to make me host. Okay. Or something. <laughs> so great, so I have already. So yeah, feel free to participate. Please, guys, it will be amazing. Um, so I'm gonna start sharing my screen. You can see my screen now. 
Okay, so this is the name of the topic. I cannot make it big, wait. Um, this is the name of the topic. Uh, it's uh, Black Lives Matter and Activism During an Epidemic uh, by, by me. <laughs> and the first point is what is activism? Uh, as you can see here, there is a very easy uh, summary, summary of what does it mean to be an activist. Uh, but the main idea is to um, to have to make actions that bring political and social social change. There are many kinds of activism. Uh, some of them are directed to different topics that uh, address different problematics of the world. But there are three versions that I try to simplify as much as possible to make it easy to understand. Uh, but these are the three ones that I could kind of uh, understand. Uh, not of uh, not of, act, uh, of of objectives of activism, but of the ways that uh, activism can be done. So the first one is demanding solutions in opposition to mainstream policies. Mainstream policies uh, are the ones made by the state, uh, by the governments, and when you demand solutions, uh, you do it by protests, by strikes, demonstrations. Um, this kind of uh, activism is the one that you, we usually see uh, is the most common one in the sense of the is the most popular one. Um, usually, oh wait, uh, usually, um, usually this is more popular because it's more visual. You see it every day in the in the news, in the newspaper. You see it basically on the streets. It's it's visual. Uh, that includes the media, that includes internet activism, uh, that includes demonstrations on the streets uh, with, uh, with a, uh, I don't know how to say it, with, uh, you know, with the papers saying something with the posters. Uh, that includes uh, not, uh, pro not propaganda in that, in that specific sense, but you know, like when you see advertisements that have like a political purpose, that's usually this kind, this is the first uh, version of activism, the one that demands a solution addressing a specific issue. To give you an example, will be uh, okay if the government if the government approves um, if the government approves a law that allows companies to fire people without paying them any 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 indemnization, without paying them any money, like without just the the companies are free to fire anybody they want. And then workers come out to the streets and say, like, no, you cannot do that. That's the first kind. Like, if they go to the to strikes and be like, government, this is not okay. You cannot do this. Uh, the second one is constru constructing new ways of social behavior, or alternative uh, that are alternative to the dominant social system. Uh, I can see something in the chat. Give me a second. Are you Mingova society? Sorry for late. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, I don't understand what you're saying. If you can tell me, Iman will be nice. I, I didn't just saying hello in Cambodian. Oh, hello! Yeah. Hola, so, hola! So we got someone from Cambodia and someone from Indonesia right there, friends of mine. So, oh, yeah. this is so cool. So nice to share this in such an international environment. It's very cool. So, well, uh, the second one is constructing new ways of social behavior. Um, this take long term. The first kind of uh, activism is short term uh, because you just go to the strike and say this is what I want and expect long term changes. But the second one uh, really tries to create new behaviors in society. Uh, I think the best example for this will be environmental activism uh, that as, as you know lately because of Fridays for Future and the other one is Exti Extinction Rebellion or something like that, um, both of them go to strikes and really try to put it into, into the public uh, consciousness, in the public thinking what's happening. Um, but this second one is really trying to create new ways, to, uh, new ways for people to behave. So I will say that environmental activism is more related to this. Uh, many times they really try to change the policies, but sometimes it's just about how you change at home. So yeah, uh, you can start recycling, you can start using um, bio, biodegradable materials, and that's up to you. 
And that's what this kind of activism tries to do, tries to change how you act, to change how the world acts. Um, and this takes long, long term uh, because you need education, you need social centers that try to help the people that are in, in trouble. Uh, that would, for example, uh, ONGs, like uh, I work in Salvation Army. I was not a fan of them, to be honest, <laughs> but they did have some uh, social centers where people can actually help each other and find new ways to survive other than just the normal uh, state driven capabilities that just include like uh, being a worker for a company or uh, being a worker for the state. Basically, those are the solutions that the world gives you. Uh, this gives you a com communitary solution uh, and that's why it's alternative to other kinds of uh, uh, other kinds of like behaviors that you see in the social system. And the third one will be a revolutionary and fundamental change of societal institutions. This one is the most radical. This one is the one that really wants to change everything as we know it. Uh, that will be, for example, the revolution in, in, in France and Russia, in the States in the, in the, seven, in the 18th century. Um, and in the 20th century. Um, these are revolutions that really tried to overthrow the, gov the pre-existing government and create a new kind of state with new laws and with new, uh, with new ways of, of, uh, of, of institutions, new institutions that rule over people. Uh, the problem is the, of these uh, examples are that all of them uh, kind of evolved in new ways of oppression. So uh, the last one, the radical one, is the one that is in most debate, especially in the new, in the new age. But we will go in deeper to all these points. Um, now we will, uh, if you have any questions, please stop me. If I'm talking too fast, please tell me. Like, this is not an easy topic that I'm trying to address. So I understand if it's like sometimes a little bit too much information and even too less information. So please ask me questions. Um, I cannot change this. I don't know. Oh, so now we're going to go to some methods, method, me, me, methods, methods that activism can uh, use for accomplishing the different objectives. Um, the first one uh, that I have here is uh, the most aggressive one. These are guerrilla, guerrilla, guerrillas, guerrillas, guerrillas. Um, as you can see here, this is Che Guevara, who is a very famous figure in Latin America. And this is Fidel Castro, who was, who was, or still is. Well, it's kind of a mystery if he actually died. I don't remember anymore. But he was the president of Cuba. Now Raúl Castro is ruling his brother. Uh, but he actually became kind of a dictator. But Che Guevara was uh, guiding the was guiding the revolutionary forces in Cuba. Then he went to Africa, and then he he went to Argentina as well, where he actually died. Um, I see something in the chat. I'm just gonna check if there are no questions. Too much revolutionary actors in one picture. <laughs> okay, um, so um, yeah, Che Guevara, uh, Che Guevara, it's kind of a controversial figure. Uh, I'm, I ex as well, I'm not exactly a fan of the guy, but what you can say about him is that he really pushed the revolutionary forces in Cuba. He really uh, was an inspiring force for even the, uh, post, uh, the, the, the afterwards of this revolution. And actually, if you see the history of Cuba, is what is happening now is not as bad as it was before. Before uh, Fidel Castro, there was Batista, who was like a capitalist ruler that was like very close to the U.S. government and was letting Cuba to be used as, as however they want. So. At the end, Che Guevara with Fidel Castro really liberated and then ruled, especially Castro, over Cuba. But they changed. They really uh, changed the government. They are like the third kind of uh, activism that we saw. It's like they're revolutionary force. Um, they, this took a lot of violence, of course, which I'm not a fan of. But uh, of course, it worked. Then you have, uh, you have protests. Um, which uh, usually are supposed to be non-violent, but it can uh, sometimes it can be perverted into violence. 
Uh, so I put this one uh, as the second one, the protest. The protest is characterized by the, this policy-driven, demand-driven uh, activism. You want something to be changed and you demand it. You are like, I want this at this moment and I really, really, really believe in this. And you show it by screaming, you show it by not allowing the, the normal functions of society to work until the change is made. Uh, you show it with uh, posters and stuff. You really like at that moment. This is how you feel, and you made it. You, and you make it feel. You made it feel felt. I don't know how to say it properly. Um, the third one that you have is lobbying. Uh, lobbying activism has many uh, uh, faces. Like you can really believe that it's good for some reasons, and as well, it can be very damaging for the representation of people. Um, Usually, activism starts when, when the represent, representants of, uh, of the people in the government fail. When you don't believe in more than your congressman uh, or your president or your ministers are representing your interests, you usually go into activism. And it's usually this more active, um, not, not just active, but more in a, in a way violent activism. Um, but lobbying, I will say, is one of the most pacific ways to do it. And as well, it can be one of the most uh, ineffective ways to do it. One of the most uh, popular activism in, related to lobbying will be environmental activism. That's why I choose this picture, um, especially if we talk about uh, activism that really wants some positive so social change in the world, uh, because you can have Mm, activism that really doesn't want to have positive uh, effects on the world. But uh, in this case, environmental activism, I think, really wants something good. But the way that you do it, it's through uh, pushing political agendas into the Congress. Uh, and this is usually driven by money and big companies or trying to change how big companies act. Uh, which is a good thing, of course, but you still depend on congressmen to do it. And congressmen usually depend on the money of their contributors and their sponsors to actually like make changes. So this is one of the most uh, in-between things. Uh, most radicals, the most radicals activists will see lobbying as not exactly a uh, way of activism because it's more a way to do politics inside the system and not actually try to rearrange how the system works. Uh, but it's considered as a way of activism and it can do its good as every kind of activism, it can do its good. Um, then you have, uh, this is the mask of uh, B for Vendetta, the movie, but it's uh, very well known because of, uh, because of Anonymous, this uh, hackers group. Um, this hacktivism is very related to getting information out it's like really going inside the deep of the system and showing its flaws by uh, deliberated, the deliberated uh, expose of uh, exposing information. Deliberate, well, uh, derivative, well, I cannot say that word, but like on purpose show information that is supposed to be classified and can damage the global system or a specific system. Um, as, as, as any kind of activism, this is, uh, it has its part of uh, violence. We will talk about what violence means in activism and in general in, 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 what, in whatever kind of uh, activity that you do. It's not, it's not just about physical violence, but this as well how it can affect uh, psychologically and in, in an ideological way. Uh, so yeah, activism has the danger to really uh, destroy the perception of our governments in in such a fast way that people cannot even uh, recognize it as a problem. It's, it can be too fast. Um, at this moment, Anonymous, for example, is uh, threatened the U.S. government to show their information. And uh, as far as I have seen, they're trying to prove that some of the people in power are involved in pedophilia and stuff. But at the end, people are not actually processing this information because it's too strong and goes a little bit outside of the point so yeah hacktivism has its purpose but as well it has uh, any kind of activism has to be treated it's in its own um, 
area with its own respect. So yeah, it's uh, it's one kind one method you can have. Then you have completely non-violent uh, approach. This is famous Gandhi. Uh, as I said before, I'm not a fan in general of any of these guys, and that includes Gandhi. I have my personal reasons for that. That's more in my opinion point. But uh, yeah, Gandhi accomplished something very crazy, to be honest, by by putting a non-violent resistance. He got the UK government out of India, which is like a crazy accomplishment. Like still is something that we should still be amazed of. Uh, so yeah, this is another kind of uh, activism that you can have, completely non-violent. It's just this kind of resistance that show that uh, I will not cooperate with you. I even will not eat, which was the case of Gandhi, which sounds, you know, our age, it's crazy. For us, it sounds ridiculous, like the idea of, I will not eat, so put your army away. I think that's something that wouldn't work in our times anymore, but for Gandhi, it worked, and it was super powerful. It, I think for the UK government, it was worse to create a martyr than actually, uh, uh, than, than actually just keep ruling over India. Um, now we have uh, propaganda. This is basically war propaganda. It's not exactly feminist propaganda, um, but it was used in both ways. Uh, it, this was used uh, by the US government to um, support the women's rights movements that existed in America, and in the same time to en enroll them uh, in the war efforts that were ha they were having during the Second World War. Uh, yeah, so propaganda is as well a way to use uh, to, to do activism. You can see an advertisement and stuff. Uh, as well, I don't have pictures of it, but you can do it by art. Uh, there is many artists in literature, in movies, conceptual artists, uh, artists pardon, sorry, uh, that uh, address social issues by, uh, by creating, by using their, their crafts. Um, there are movies that uh, are usually, uh, uh, usually docu doc documentaries that show realities that are not shown by us by mainstream media um, and that allows more consciousness about what's happening. Uh, as well, econ econ the economy can affect some ways that uh, big companies act. Uh, I think you have heard probably about boycotting big companies by not buying their products. Like, oh yeah, Nescafe is an evil company or McDonald's is an evil company. Don't buy their stuff and they're done. That's kind of an activism. I don't believe in it that much, but it's something that people do. And as well, the internet and social media, it's something um, apart from activism from Anonymous, there is like participation in social media that basically what it does is to create awareness and it's kind of a, sorry, and it's kind of a non-violent resistance. Um, so yeah, those are the those are the kinds of activism that you can find, the methods and kinds of activism that exist. Uh, some of them, of course, this is a very wide topic, and there are many stuff that uh, I will not talk about, but uh, you can of course find about. But these are the ones that we are more in touch in our in our days. Um, I will I will talk a little bit just about the two eras that are important is the 20 the 20th century and the 21st century uh, which means past century and this century the small time we have had in this century and how activism has been the same but with little change in topics and in the way it has expressed uh, first I think this picture is actually taken in, in the 2000s but it was a very big thing in the in the 20th century uh, all the anti-colonialism efforts and protests, especially in the countries dominated by, by France and the UK, in Africa and Asia. Um, so yeah, well, that was one of the topics that were addressed by, by activists, uh, was anti-colonialism. Um, then we have anti-war efforts. Um, uh, I think like this was more in uh, America, uh, of course, but it was the fact that uh, many of the youngsters, uh, American youngsters, didn't agree on the government's decision to participate in war. So uh, all of them went into the streets to protest against war. So that was one of the kinds of activism of the past century. As well, we have um, 
it's different from now, but we had racial issues uh, protests. The difference from before is that they, uh, they were fighting for rights that they didn't have. At this moment, we will talk about it, it's different, but at that moment they were just fighting for being recognized as normal human beings that had, that had rights, normal human rights we all have. Uh, especially this is a case in America and South Africa and in European countries. Um, in Latin America, we had a similar problem, but with indigenous people. Um, they, it's not that they were not recognized as people, but people were literally segre segregated them. Say, there is a word here, segregate. Uh, they were literally putting them apart from normal uh, society. So this was, even in Latin America, this was a huge thing, trying to put these people into normal life. Like just, they were fighting for being treated as normal human beings. Um, as well, the women's movement were fighting exactly for the same. Now we have women's uh, feminist protests, but they are not the same as in the past. Uh, and it's kind of the same reason as, uh, we will talk about the ones in, the, in, in our time, but in the past it's kind of the same as black people and racial issues. Uh, they were just fighting for being treated as normal human beings. They were just uh, trying to be recognized as, uh, as, as uh, right holders as everybody else. Uh, then we have, uh, then we have uh, worker strikes which are very, uh, I think there have been all along the time since the start of capitalism, we had the class struggle that had nothing to do with kings or had nothing to do with the state, but it was about me being the worker and you being my boss and not paying me enough, not giving me enough freedom, not giving me enough vacation, not giving me insurance or basically treating me like a slave. Um, that those have been like constant strikes that we still live uh, even now. Uh, as I said, the, uh, with with the previous uh, movements, I think they have they have changed, but we still have the same topics. It's just the way they are expressed, but the fight is exactly the same. Um, we will talk now about the 21st century activism. I can see there is a meeting time. I think we just have like eight minutes more. So I think we will have to go to a second, uh, a second uh, Yeah, meeting. so I have already sent you the second session link right now. I'm trying to send to the participants via email and also messenger, but you can continue until we branch it up. No, so. Perfect. Okay, so in the 21st century, uh, uh, I made a spelling mistake, activism, ignore, ignore, ignore the E here, activism. Uh, we have one, I think the biggest change that we have from the previous century is environmental activism, uh, as we know it now. In the past, especially in the last 20 years of the, of the last century, there was some environmental activism, but there is nothing as, as we have seen uh, during these years. Uh, and especially not people on the streets really fighting for protecting the planet. So that's one of the topics that are kind of new. Then you have the LGBT community that as well started in the previous century, all this movement started in the pre previous century. But I think it's in, during the, the last 20 years uh, of this century, like uh, since the beginning of this century, that we have really seen the strength of this movement like really go to the sky. Uh, of course, the efforts that, that were made by this movement in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, century were very strong and that's why people now uh, have like the LGBT, LGBTI community protests have so much power now is because of the efforts of the past century. But now I think are one of the main topics that is in everybody's head. Like we all see this stuff all around the world and it's something that has grown in immensely. Um, then we have as well, as I said before, there is a similar topic. We still have women trying to, women trying to fight for the rights. But now the rights are already given, they're recognized. It's not like, oh yeah, women cannot vote anymore. The problem now is women violence. And it's similar, uh, it's similar for black people. This is a Black Lives Matter protest. And these two fights are extremely, extremely similar. Um, they change in the sense that now they're recognized as right holders, 
but the biggest difference is that uh, from the past century is that now they have rights, but they're still being um, violated, uh, they're still being uh, attacked, uh, not just uh, in a societal way, but physically. So this is like the fights uh, for these two groups. As well, we have for the feminists, especially I think Latin America is one of the biggest topics and it's abortion law. Uh, I don't know how it's in Asia, uh, I haven't researched to be honest, but in Latin America this is one of the biggest topics for feminists is to, uh, to be allowed to have an abortion. Um, in Europe and in, in the US it's still like half-half, but in Europe it's completely allowed and in Latin America it's completely denied. Uh, even the most progressive countries like Argentina are, are like one of the biggest fighters for this because they, they still have illegal abor abortion. So yeah, this is one of the biggest um, protests. And class struggle. Uh, this is a protest in Ecuador. This is actually the Ecuadorian flag. This is my country. Uh, class struggle still exists, of course. It has existed since the, since the 19th century. It's not nothing, it's, 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 this is not something new. But uh, now it has changed. It's not about really like trying to implement communism in the country. It's really to get at least the, the, minimal, uh, the minimal recognition as an important and vital part of society. We will go in deep after, like, the, after the, we change the meeting. Um, but this is, this, this is something that's still happening and this is a very important topic. Now, uh, to go inside the topic will be the Black, Life, uh, Black Lives Matter history and the objectives um, to go more into what's happening right now. Uh, but we still have four minutes that I think I will use to discuss a little bit about the criticism on, uh, on activism. Um, there is some stuff that you have to understand about activism and is that usually activism is not a revolutionary force. There is activism that can work as that, as we saw in the, it is the third type of, uh, it's of the simplified versions of activism that I showed you before. But it's not usually supposed to be that. It's usually more uh, uh, based on reforms. They really want to just change a small stuff in society to keep it running. Uh, and that could be a big problem. Uh, and as well, trying to be revolutionary at this moment can be a big problem. So we are going to try to understand both sides. But first, uh, I think it's important to know that all these little fights, like they're not little, they're very important, but they seem, all of them seem separated. They seem different topics. All of these people that were fighting, that were activists uh, trying to change society, in reality, they were just fighting uh, for the same thing. All of these fighters, uh, activists, they are just searching for the same objective and is living in a more, in, in a more uh, just society, in a more fair society that allows them to live as proper human beings. And we, which means that in this society we are not, in this society that we live now, we are not allowed uh, to properly show ourselves more than it's uh, useful for the people in power. Uh, this is kind of uh, my part of opinion, I would say. Um, so all of these fights are addressed to, I, I, don't, I don't like to use the word enemy, but I will say problem, are addressed to fight one single problem. Um, so if you think about what's, uh, uh, what's ruling the world at this moment, it's a government, government uh, based on the state, on the national state idea, uh, that is basically ruled by the loss of economy. So we are ruled by a national state that just cares about economical systems. Uh, not economical systems as itself, but one specific economical system that I would not say its name because it will sound not proper for this conversation, but it's just about defending, defending this economical system and trying to make it run, even if we know that it's fundamentally flawed. And these are the proofs that is fundamentally flawed. Uh, even though some of these fights seem, seem unconnected, uh, if you go deep into why these fighters or these activists are trying to fight against these inequalities, they all come from the same root, and the root is uh, 
an, econ um, an economy run by a national state that just cares about protecting itself. Uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, what what's trying to be changed is a whole system. Uh, some of them just want to change the small stuff, or they think they want to change the small stuff. But if they really want to see long-lasting change, they will have to go through a deep revaluation of everything that we live in. Um, so uh, at the end, the problem that comes with this idea of really trying to create a, a huge revolution and change all the system is the question of what happens next. And that's the problem. That's a problem that not None, none of these activists thought. None of them were in the in the thinking of what will happen after uh, after we change the system as we know it. That's why they don't even want to do it. They just want the small changes. But the small changes, as you see, even though they they fought in the past century for a whole century, the same problems were just. A little bit with a little bit of changes, but the same problems are the ones we are trying to fight in this century. Uh, I think I will continue in the next call. Um, I will just stop here and change to the next call. Is that okay, Iman? Yes, it's okay. So I have already sent the. Okay, cool. So we can start the second session right now. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, as I was saying, um, that will be one of the problems. And I was just wanted to quote uh, at, at the beginning, uh, Foucault was the one saying that all these little, uh, little as little as they seem, fights are articulated to the same problem. Um, and the second part it will be more based on Slavoj uh, Žižek, which is the phrase I use for the advertisement of this. And he says that uh, in the past, uh, Marx, Karl Marx, the founder of the first International Communist Party and phil philosopher and sociologist, he wrote the, cap the Capital. And he said in his thesis of Feuerbach, he uh, expressed in the 11th thesis, last one, that philosophers have tried to change the world, uh, have tried to interpret the world, but now it's the time to change it. Uh, and he says, Zizek says the opposite. For him, the past century, we tried too fast to change everything. And that, that resulted in the worst communist regime that we know, which was the un Soviet Union, which until now is being quoted as the worst catastrophe of communism. And it was. It was because people tried to change it too fast. Uh, as well, it was one of the biggest achievements of Russia. Like They were competing head to head with the United States, which would be impossible without this regime. But that doesn't justify the atrocities committed. Uh, so Zizek is the one actually saying, "Stop, stop acting without thinking." And actually, I'm just going to quote him directly to finish this part. He literally says, "Ok, okay, we heard your story, but what do you really do to replace the system?" Um, he says that usually what we get is a vague social democratic utopian solution or a moralistic critique. On this, on this world, not a real answer of what's going to happen next. So what his advice is, uh, I quote, is start thinking. Don't get caught in this savior activist pressure. Do something, let's do it, blah, blah, blah. Who is to sit down and rethink, reinterpret what's happening now. Um, of course, we still need people that go to the streets and really push what the, the, the ideas that are wrong with our society. But if there is no, these little fights mean nothing. Uh, strength, the, the, the power that the state and the running economical system that we live in have already. So what is important at this moment as, uh, as youngsters and in general, I think we all are activists at this moment, is to really try to sit down, understand what's happening in the world, and try to decide, of course we cannot, but we can try to decide where the world should go after this. And then we should go to the streets, then we should try to overthrow governments, and then we will actually see real change. Uh, that's my opinion. I finished my opinion section of the video uh, at this moment, but now we will go to Black Lives Matter history. Uh, Black Lives Matter started in 2013, 
uh, especially with in social media with the hashtag Black Lives Matter. Uh, this is uh, this is a teenager, Afri African -Amer American teenager, that got killed in the 2012, um, and this was the reason that the why the movement started with the hashtag Black Lives Matter. Uh, after that, in 2014, there was after, after the shooting of two Afro African American uh, per people in uh, in the United States. Uh, um, they went to the streets in 2014, and then, then, then is where, then there was the how can I say? Well, at that moment, they they got uh, national recognition as a movement. Um, after that, uh, they are continuously kept going on the streets, especially against uh, against killings provoked by the police uh, that caused the police to against like black people. So they have been nonstop since 2014. And then we had the case of George Floyd this uh, this year, I think it was already two weeks ago. Uh, and that really exploded the next step of, of this movement uh, that I think it comes right now. Uh, at this moment, it just became internationally uh, recognized, even though it was already recognized, but at this moment is internationally supported. Everybody went to the streets, like even in countries that have no relation with what happened with George Floyd. Europeans were on the streets, and I think that says a lot. Uh, but what it's uh, important to know is what are their objectives. After we, we now, like after what I said before about uh, what activism has in its dangers, I think it's important to understand what they want. What is their plan after they they actually accomplish, or what do they want to actually accomplish? So uh, the first objective is the end of death penalty. The second objective is the decriminalization of drug-related offenses and prostitution. The third objective is the demilar demilitarization of the police, which means that they have not they don't have to be armed and they don't have to be actively violent against criminals. Uh, the fourth one would be the reparation for lasting harms caused to African Americans of uh, of slavery, and the fifth will be the investment in education and jobs. As you can see, these are big changes, especially for American society. That's a very important thing to put across. Uh, I think, like people, especially in Europe, that are going on the streets, are just going on the streets for the fact of defending what they believe, which is completely fine but sometimes ignoring that these objectives are very specific to a specific to a specific country with a specific problematics so sometimes it's okay to defend these 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 ideals but i think it's important to go in deep to the objectives of the movement and if you really want to see changes in your own country try to find your own movement that defends that, that tries to address your own problematics um, that's something that as a Latin American, I really, really, really uh, emphasize, emphasize because people in Ecuador are, are going on the streets to defend the life of George Floyd, or George Floyd, of George Floyd. But during, um, during the protests of Ecuador in October, the police uh, actively attacked, and in some cases they actually killed, indigenous people of my country and they didn't say nothing especially these people that are now defending black lives matter uh, of course there were people in ecuador defending life of indigenous people in ecuador but now in the social media is exploding black lives matter and it's like why you don't do the same for the problematics of our country uh, i'm not saying that black lives of matter I'm just saying everybody has different problematics and we should address them in our own, uh, in our own way uh, without just following the trend, the mainstream that is happening at the moment. And that's the second part I will talk about. Before COVID-19, we had protests already and we, don't, we must not forget these protests. Uh, this was Chile. Uh, this is just a representation of uh, one of the protests because actually the Latin America was all in strike because of economical things. It had nothing to do with race. The uh, internationally monetary fund had been so involved in the politics and economics of our countries that our natives were being affected. Uh, there was uh, so many resource, uh, in, how can I say, 
there were so many changes in the prices of basic resources that people's lives were, were threatened. And people went to the streets and they fought and sometimes they won something, they won some policy changes. Um, in Ecuador there was supposedly a, a discussion with the indigenous people that actually led to nothing at the end. But there was, a, there was something already happening. This was France in the same month, I think. It was October, November. Um, and they were fighting because uh, Macron was raising the, the fuel price, which was destroying the lives of uh, transport, transport business. And the same, at the end, they were fighting the government. They achieved little change, but not actually fundamental change of their society. And even they were like attacked by the public and the, and the mainstream media. And the US during COVID-19. I think this is important to remember. The US was already on strike before George Floyd. They were already fighting because they were not happy to be locked down. This phrase summarizes what these people were thinking. Give me liberty or give me COVID-19. They didn't care about anything else. They just wanted to go out. Um, why am I saying this? Uh, of course, there is something that we should make a difference of. The people that are fighting for Black Lives Matter, uh, some of them are white people, of course, but they're white people with uh, um, left uh, thinking, left for America. Um, and most of the people here, as you can see, are, are, are completely white and they are older, as you can see in this picture. That's our generalization, of course. but. My point is there are different people fighting for these two things. I'm not saying it's the same people, but this is something I was trying to understand, um, especially when people were um, criticizing the fact that uh, there is people in, uh, in going outside to strikes with thousands of people during this pandemic that will just endanger more, more people. My, I, for me, there is an, this is an important point, and it's the combination of these two factors the protests before COVID-19 and the fact that we have been locked down for months. Um, I think these two things combined and that's why we have now the case of Black Lives Matter that exploded all around the world. People were angry already. People, people had economical problems before the pandemic. During the pandemic, these economical problems just went deeper and as well, we start to have psychological problems. And plus this, there was <clears throat> something that has been happening for years uh, the abuse of the American police again uh, towards um, black people uh, and the result is what we have now with Black Lives Matter. This is the end of my presentation actually. Uh, but I think this simplifies very nice what happened in the last month and is the this trend as well of the black picture on Instagram. This is a perfect example of uh, of a uh, uh, internet activism and yeah many people can say that this creates awareness and of course it does but as we talked before it's not about just acting for the fact of acting it's not just about putting a picture on Instagram for the fact of putting a picture a black picture on Instagram that can mean nothing um, and it's not about just going to the streets it's not just about going to the streets for the fact of going randomly to the streets it's about thinking what action should be taken to create the world that we thought before that has, has to be. Um, so yeah, that will be my advice for, for the future and for right now. Uh, I'm, of course, I'm just uh, one more youngster trying to do my best for the world. And I will say what we can do now, especially during COVID-19, is to try to think what are the social changes we, that we want to see in the world. Um, I think it's, uh, it's very important that people are on the streets trying to fight for their rights. I think that's something that historically we need and we have, sh we have seen how it works. But at this moment, it's, of course, it makes, uh, it makes more risk for people that can get sick. And we are trying to reduce this problem. But most importantly, the fight we're fighting right now is not going to be solved on the streets. Is not going to be solved by attacking the police in another country that is not the U.S. Even attacking police in the U.S. is not a solution. Um, there is a Foucault actually says that the first uh, institution that revolutionaries attack is the judicial system, 
and is exactly for the reason that they are the ones that superficially represent the power of the state and the economical system. Uh, but they are not the ones making the laws. They are not the ones reinforcing. They are just the ones reinforcing the laws, but they are not the ones that are representing the people and creating these laws in the name of the people. So what we should do is really try to think what we should do, what we want to see in the world before just going to the streets and destroy everything, uh, especially at this moment. At some moments, I think people really need to show the government what's happening. Uh, showing this content is important. But at this moment, I think it's, it's even the world as, as, as its, <laughs> its nature and everything is asking us to take a step back, look back at what it has been, look back at what is being done right now, and recreate, reinterpret the world that we live in. So that will be the end for me. Um, if somebody has any questions, I will be very happy to answer. I think we have got one question earlier in the chat box from Oli. Um, Oh, what is your position in terms of this movement lately? Uh, I suppose you're talking about Black Lives Matter. Uh, I will say Black Lives Matter, it's, as I think I already stated it, I will just summarize the idea. It's a very important movement for the United States of America. I think we all suffer from different kinds of racism all around the world towards different people, not just about, against black people. I think like uh, in Latin America, we are racist against black people, indigenous people, people that are not that white. You know, we're racist against everybody, even Asians, you know, like we're just racist against everybody. And it's, the problem is that, yeah, nobody's killing, the police is not kill, actively killing them, uh, except if uh, they're in protest, they kill indigenous people. So I think we all have very specific problems in the terms of, raci of, of racism. We all have different kinds of racism and we all kind of actively, uh, uh, kind of actively increase the racism in our own societies. Um, it's sad to say it like that, but it's kind of the truth. But the answer would be, we all need our own like, like Black Lives Matter for our own countries with its own name and trying to fight its own fight because we need different changes in our different societies. Um, if there is a problem that I see with the Black Lives Matter is that it's concentrated on the violence of the American police. Um, I'm sorry, but my, my police is not uh, killing black people in America. And that's a big problem. I have to address the problems of what my police, my police force is doing in my country. Um, I remember, um, I think you were with Anya uh, before, you, you were with Anya, and mm -hmm. Anya, Anya actually was telling me that in, in England they were attacking the unarmed police in the name of Black Lives Matter. And they're un unarmed police in the UK that have nothing to do with George Floyd, and they're being attacked. I, I, I'm a right, uh, rights, uh, human rights defender for sure. I, I, I completely agree with the movement Black Lives Matter. But I don't agree that Europeans that have nothing to do with what happened in America are attacking innocent police force. Um, as well, I wouldn't say that the, I'm a fan of the police in any country. As you can see, I have a thing in general against power. Uh, but I will say that's the fight, the general fight, all these activists that I showed you before, all this history of activism is against power. And it's our fight, I think everybody's fight, especially for us that we don't own the power, to find our way to reduce the power that these people have over us. Uh, and if at some point any of us, the six people that we're here, if any of us at some point get some power just to give it back to the people that actually give it to you, never assume that power is yours as the people that we have seen in the government, in big companies, and of course in the American police that feels that it's okay to kill a criminal black guy. Even if he was a criminal, you have no right to kill. So that will be like my stand on, on Black Lives Matter. I think it's a movement that makes sense in the context of the United States of America, but we all need our own movements. Um, and at the end of all these movements have the same objective. That will be it. <laughs>
that was very exciting to know your viewpoint on activism and also Black Lives Matter. I was really, really uh, appreciate that. I really now understand uh, like various kinds of activism. Uh, but I think I, um, I think I also have some questions. But I just would like to ask our participants first if they have some other questions about all the topics or some other things like during COVID-19 even. So um, do you have any other questions, uh, uh, Odi, uh, I do, I do. I've, I, actually, I want to continue uh, our discussion about, about this is the movement, okay? But uh, let me greeting you, okay, Joge. Buenas tardes, Jorge. ¿Cómo estás? Hola, muy bien. <laughs> Sí, sí, sí. Okay. sí, sí. Hablas español, qué bien. Yeah, Estudié la cuestas primero. Sí, en punto. Perdón. Um, Estudié en la uh, escuertas primero. Oh, mira. Ah, genial. Oh, qué chévere. Uh, I'm sorry, guys. I cannot okay. translate uh, <laughs> Espanol to okay. our participants. <laughs> sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Maybe guys. English, Adi, but amazing. I'm very happy that you didn't speak Spanish. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. Of, some of Indonesian school uh, teach how, how to speak Spanish and oh, teach amazing. European language. Okay, back to our topic again. Uh, actually, um, it's interesting if you talk about activism because, you know, I was uh, international, international relations students under the Faculty of Political and Social Science. And being activist is my breakfast and lunch when I was in student. Um, especially, I um, um, previews inequality uh, in terms of human rights. And, you know, in, 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 in Indonesia, if I can share a little bit about um, my experience as activism. Uh, activists, I mean, or activism, okay. Um, we have a lot of um, social social problem in, in terms of uh, inequality, especially lately uh, because of Black Matter. Uh, we have uh, indigenous people in the West because, you know, uh, Indonesia actually consists of variety um, race and ethnic. We have a thousand seven hundred seventeen uh, episode race it that's very huge um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we also have um, a kind of uh, black people in, in Indonesia uh, we call Papuan Papuan if you know um, Papuan you can you can search in Google and then you uh, you, you, you will know but what is Papuan um, maybe you can you write know, in chat the name Yes, yeah. Papuan. Oh, thank you very much. Prepare for interrupting. Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, um, there are so, something a gap for justice in in, in, in my country because um, some of um, people take advantage for for um, justice, especially I I don't know maybe they. Um, for I mean, for, for my government, like a police or, or, or a lawmaker, uh, when they uh, decide uh, to punish some people about, about uh, their actions, they just look uh, about the, 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 the color of skins because, uh, because of the West, West people, I mean, the pop one, they uh, have a different skins. They're very dark, you know. Um, Lately, for, for the case, uh, we found uh, two um, student student activists uh, who uh, refuse um, uh, how to say racism racism um, mm -hmm. it, 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 in, in, in my in in my islands it's a difference with with, with uh, Papua because. Uh, you know, Indonesia is consists of also uh, a lot of islands, 
we separate a lot of islands, not like in Ecuador or in, in European, uh, we have a lot of islands. In, in my island, Java, um, uh, there, there are some, some group, they uh, speak and mock uh, Papua like a monkey, you know, because the, they are very uncivilized. Yeah, uh, lack of resources in, in, in the West. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of group in, my, in, in Java, they uh, do racist to uh, West Papua. And then there are some uh, student in Papua protest, uh, like make some demonstration, but, but in the peace, peace way to um, uh, ask the justice for the government. But the fact is, they, uh, my government do arrest some of uh, the, the, stu the student and then they uh, send to the jail for 10 years. You know, there are, uh, for, for, for this, this, this student is, you know, it's very young. They are just 20 years old and then they go to the jail for uh, maybe 10 years for, I mean, for, for the punishment. I'm sorry if, if, if my English is not really completely okay. Yeah, uh, hopefully you, you can understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's perfect. I understand perfectly. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. it's terrible. Yeah. Actually, I, I just want to share about this. And then uh, for my, my, uh, my big questions, um, based on your presentations last time, uh, you mentioned a lot of uh, demonstration that um, help in uh, some of liberalism countries like France, US, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe just France and US, um, who run capitalism, uh, capitalism system for economy, you know. Uh, in my opinion, this, uh, this demonstration created by lack of economic between society, especially in US, maybe uh, there is a um, uh, structural, structural uh, discrimination in terms of economic, like white people, between white people and then black and the, the bottom, maybe like indigenous people, like Indian or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, um, my, my question is, do you think because of this uh, system, I mean, for capitalism, it's uh, create some chaos. I mean, like um, um, yeah. Do you think like it, it uh, uh, capitalism can create? Uh, how to say? Um, do you think uh, capitalism as a fool to create? This chaos of catastrophic. Uh, so yeah. there is this kind of, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, yeah. Because uh, conversely, if we compare uh, like um, country who run socio socialism, communism like China, and then in 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 Southeast Asia like uh, Laos, they also run social communism uh, for. For uh, the, I, I don't know because uh, I think there is a little bit gap, social gap uh, in society uh, when we look to social communism countries like China. Do you, uh, I just want to compare. I just want to compare like that. Uh, do you think liberalism or capitalism is still the best to run? Uh, liberty or something like that okay um okay like, give me one second uh, liberal mm -hmm. capitalism yes. okay um actually before when i was trying to i was saying that there is like uh there is kind of one main objective and then they wanted to use the word enemy um there is actually that's of course my personal opinion and that's the word i didn't want to use before is uh, it was capitalism i was trying to say national state and the economical the running economical system but for me the biggest problem that we address nowadays is related to the capitalist uh, society that the society society that we live in 
this economical system it's the predatory uh, actually it's based on competition and it's on, a, it's on a competition that is not even the natural competition that some people try to claim it's an unnatural competition that really puts the ideal of one being better than the other one in the main uh, in the main address of how we arrange society so <clears throat> for me addressing your question i don't think that liberal capitalism is the best way to run the stuff now uh, as well i wouldn't say china <laughs> the china model is the best way either to address the problems now um, what i will say is that Capitalism as, as the economical system, it's really, as you say, uh, the fuel for all these inequalities to be more, um, how can I say, to be more solid in the reality we live in. Um, of course, if you see the inequalities between men and women are basically mm -hmm. economical inequalities. If you mm -hmm. see the reasons why women are being, uh, being victims of violence, in, at least I'm talking about the Latin American context. Mm -hmm. uh, it's because of the dependence on the men of, uh, in the economical sense. Like women depend uh, on men because the man is the one working and then woman, the woman cannot leave the house even if the man is uh, physically attacking them. It's, it's, it's crazy and it's based on this, on, on this uh, capitalist thinking. At the end, that's one of the main problems. Uh, maybe the main one. And when I said before that all these little fights are addressing the same problem, I mean, yeah, that's the mm -hmm. problem, actually. Mm -hmm. All these little fights are trying to address this wow. big problem. Yeah. But just wow. to add something, just to finish to the question, um, I would like to add that the fact of China having this kind of a communist uh, regime that I don't believe is actually communist, Many people call it the state capitalism. Um, actually, Zizek, the philosopher I quoted before, and I, I really like, I think he's one of the, my, my favorite ones, especially because he's still alive. So I really appreciate the fact that he can talk about contemporary topics. Uh, he says that there were two big evils in the past century. Uh, there was the, in the communism regime, there was the evil of this big, uh, super powerful state. And in the capitalist, uh, regime was the evil of this economical driven economy that just like was a predatory economy and china just combined them both and got rid of the liberal part of liberalism oh sorry if you want to follow the case that i mentioned you search in the rule with the word oh thank you papa all lives matter oh the papa all lives matter oh thank you thank you i i will be really interested in that because i think that's what i meant when when you really have to address the problems in different ways in different countries. Even though at the end, I will say, yes, capitalism, liberal capitalism has been a fuel for all of these problems, mm. especially in Europe, in the US, and in Latin America, as far as I can like say as a witness. In Asia, I have to be honest, I'm not, I'm not an expert on what's happening in Asia. For me, it's very complicated. It's like, for me, it's like another world uh, in that sense. Um, but I can say that the case of China is something that we are very informed about uh, and I'm not a fan of, of, of what happens there either. Uh, I think that you can see by the protests in Hong Kong that liberty like, is one of the biggest fights for them. They're still trying to get rid of the inter intervention of the, uh, of the state there. Um, so yeah, I will, say, I will say that's my answer. Um, uh, capitalist, liberal capitalism is not the answer, but this communist uh, model of China is not the answer either. And that's why I, I, I keep to my words that I said before. This is the time of reinterpreting all that we have seen and really try to think what we can do different for the next generations and how we can be activists from now on. Uh, and just, just sorry, <laughs> one little thing. Just to clarify, activism for me, it's very, very, very important. The fights that people are doing are the ones that put in the consciousness of everybody that there are problems in the system. Uh, what I am a little bit uh, against, uh, against of activism is to believe that activism as itself is the solution. Um, 
is not the solution, it's part of it. It's part to put the people in the mind of stuff. Uh, to put, in the, <laughs> to put uh, in the mind of the people the stuff that's happening. Um, so yeah, sorry, that will be it. So what you have talked about is really, really interesting. And also thank, thanks to Audi, we also know about proper lives matter. So we will have, we will search, uh, 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 I'm really interested in that uh, kind of uh, uncivilized, I think, proper. So um, I really would like to say, uh, like I'm really interested in that topic very much because we have recent news that uh, George Fry brother is calling for the peaceful projects but still the activism is still going on but i guess what i have been through so far from your presentation i can see that not all activisms are not all activisms are revolutionary but still as you said it's not the answer at all but you know uh, i just have like you know wondering about something that what about like 2021 what are things what what things are going on and what kind of uh like political or social are like waiting for us in 2021 because you know i have i just uh, saw something on social media is that um what if 2020 is a trailer of 2021 so i was i was so i uh, like shock oh my god oh my god wait wait just wait there i was like okay okay just stop there let's let, let me think about it like okay like we got COVID 19 we've got like you know elections in usa and also in our country we also have elections as you said we also have some kind of projects uh, before the COVID 19. so these things are really really uh very interesting for me as a political science student Still, um, we also have a very controversial issues to dis discuss about this. And what you have been choosing this topic is very huge and controversial. And I'm very thankful for this topic. Still, it's a little bit difficult for our other participants to discuss. But uh, just I still would like to. I think uh, we still have left four minutes for the first so if you have we can have a one last question. But if you don't have, that's okay. And um so so um so there's a friend of mine from Cambodia and he just said sorry that he could not drive because he also have a meeting in another uh like uh his college's work job so um thank you very much to our participants and i think how he if you would like to say something for the last you can also say to our party okay, just to just to answer the um, that, that just to answer the last thing that you said about what is like uh, 2021 uh, yeah, like uh, given to us or with what should we wait about 2021 I think it's just uh, really to understand that everything that has happened now it's just the beginning of a big crisis that the world is gonna see uh, what is gonna come is not zombies it's not Godzilla like I have seen many memes talking about this kind of stuff it's not like the world is gonna go to to like a, a scary movie situation in that sense, but it's gonna be scary. It's gonna be violent. Our our way of lives is gonna are gonna be threatened, and we're gonna have to respond to that. Especially what's coming is a big economical crisis. I'm not saying that is the end of capitalism because people have been saying that like for centuries. And hasn't been, hasn't been. But what I'm saying is that we are going to see fundamental changes in the way we live, and I don't think we are ready to see them. So what's going to happen is hard. We are going to have to resist, especially in the economical sense. Um, and of course, when the economy, economical part, it's weak, uh, society is angry. Uh, what we are seeing now with Black Lives Matter, especially when you see it happening all around the world, it's because people are angry. It's not just about black people, it's about the economical situation, it's about an inequality situation that goes further about, uh, about the US situation. Um, yeah, oh wow, this is a very good point, Odi, I'm reading you now. Uh, I don't reject which community I mentioned in many words of COVID. because of COVID almost entire people around the world are prohibited to arrange meeting and supposed to implement social distance. Yeah, that's that's actually a very good point. But as you can see, that doesn't matter at this moment for anybody because we are in the situation of anxiety and this is going to be dragged to 2021. Um, I think uh, that's what's going to happen and the elections of 2021 in the US 
are going to be very important to determine what's going to happen in the next years. Uh, actually, the elections of uh, the U.S. are followed by Fran French elections and Ecuadorian elections as well. So I think we're going to see like Latin America, Europe, uh, the states, all of them having like different changes. I, I don't know when elections in Asia are happening, but I think it's going to be the same. We're going to see all these problems that have been uh, dragged since the beginning of the century being addressed. I think that's a positive thing. Uh, the problem is that addressing all of these problems is violent, not not just physically. I think there's going to be some physical violence, but mostly it's going to be uh, psychologically damaging for everybody. So, well, thank you, everybody. I hope it was useful information. Thank you, Iman, for having me. Um, thank you, Adi, for your useful information and questions. I was very happy to share this with you, actually. I had to investigate, and I feel very happy to Gracias. Gracias, yeah, gracias. Yeah, gracias, Jorge. So I would like to say adios. So uh, thank you very much for yeah. having you and also to our participants. We will send you uh, a PowerPoint slides and also the recording in our YouTube channel. I will send you the event link. Oh, sorry, I will send you